I think one of the most commonly asked questions I get is what kind of microphone I use for streaming and YouTube and stuff. I can tell you have a good mic, man. What's the stream? Yo, you know, you're gonna you know, like a streamer or something like that. Can I just say that you sound crisp? That's literally like the fourth person to say that. Since the answer is a little complicated, I wanted to make a video about it. Now, keep in mind, I'm not an audio engineer by any stretch. So if I screw up any of the terminology, I'm sorry. But I'll do my best to try to make it as simple as possible. So the first part, the microphone. The microphone that I use is the Rode NT1 XLR. And the version that I have includes a built-in shock mount and pop shield. I've had a handful of microphones over the years, and I think this is one of the most unique looking ones, at least for the whole setup, especially with the pop shield. I think this is particular to this microphone, even though you can get like a mesh, like a Stedman PS101, or some of the fancier ones you might see with like the higher end blue microphones. But overall, I like the look, it's very simple, but also somehow kind of complicated, and I'd, so am I, I guess. And as far as I know, this has one of the lowest noise floors, Meaning if you're not talking into it at all, that like white staticky noise that you hear in the background, it's very, very subtle. If this game ends, I'm asking for a refund. Motherfucker. <sighs> and when you're listening to yourself or you're monitoring your own voice, the less the better. And the last thing is this microphone gives a nice boominess to my voice without overdoing it like other microphones like the Shure SM7B or the RE20, give that really broadcasty sound. It's not necessarily bad, but at times it, be, it can be kind of overwhelming and hard to sort of work around. And I think it's important to note that out of the box, this is probably my favorite sound specifically for my voice. Might not work for everybody, but it happens to work for me. Before I even landed on this one, I had the MXL 990. <laughs> the Rode pod mic. You gotta dunk those, Kevin! You gotta dunk them! You gotta duck him, Kevin! The AT2035. And the next question I usually get is, why not get a Shure SM7B? It's like an SMB 2020 whatever. And actually I had one for two, three years. What are you doing? Shoot him! Fucking gun is there! Fucking gun! No, no, no! And I've tried every configuration under the sun from different pop filters and windscreens and taking off the filters and adding EQ and trying different plugins. It's a great microphone for what it's used for, but in a live stream application, it's kind of a nightmare sometimes. And if I'm trying to simplify my setup, I just want something that sort of works out of the box and something that isn't so gain hungry where I need like another device like a cloud lifter or fethead to just add extra gain. And when you have devices that need a lot of gain, like the SM7B, you have that white noise that we talked about earlier and a lot of times it raises that up. So you're hearing all of this happen and it's just another thing I want to get rid of. So I ended up selling it. Yo, get him out of here. Get him, you want a chaotic vote? Let's fucking fly, baby. Let's fucking go to the moon. We're going around the moon. We're gonna find out if it's made out of cheese, you son of a bitch. And if this is the only answer you're looking for, then you can stop here. This is the Rode NT1 XLR. Boy, there's more. So this is where things get a little bit complicated. So I'm gonna to try to simplify things as much as I can. So the microphone itself goes from XLR into three different devices. Preamplifier slash compressor, a compressor slash limiter, and an interface. And if you don't know what any of those things mean, basically it allows me to yell, cut out background noise, and add a little bit of detail to my voice all in one shot. And Margaret Wilson, you ain't <laughs> And when you get to the USB interface, your computer only sees a USB device. So you don't have to worry about extra drivers or virtual cables or any of that messy stuff. And then you go into Zoom or Discord or whatever it is. You say, here's my USB microphone. That's it. Everybody hears the final product. And I bring that up because the next question I usually get is why not get a Go XLR? Surprise, I had a Go XLR for a while too. And I ended up returning it because it just didn't have a lot of the flexibility that I wanted. It has some of the features that I have in my setup and ultimately it seemed kind of buggy at times, especially because you need the software to run. So if you don't run the software or the app crashes, you have no sound, no microphone, no processing, nothing. Everything just goes out. Technically my setup still achieves the same thing as a Go XLR, so I can't knock it, 
but it would take a hardware failure. The device itself would have to just stop turning on in order for my setup to stop working versus an application that in my experience and a couple others it does crash pretty frequently. And some updates have taken care of it. And again, the device isn't bad. It just wasn't for me. So let's talk about the three devices. There's there's sort of like the blood and guts of the whole operation. That's really what colors my voice and adds all the juice, if you will. It's sort of the secret sauce of the whole equation here. And I'll try to break it down as much as I can. If you want to just copy my settings out of the box and buy the same exact setup, you're more than welcome to. And there's a good chance that statistically somebody out there is going to have an issue with how I have it set up. And that's fine too. But for now, this is how I have it configured. So the first step is the DBX286S preamp. And I use this specifically to give my microphone gain, which is sort of the volume so that everyone can hear properly. The other main feature that I use for it is the expander slash gate, which in my case just cuts out any white noise and background sound. And the best example I have was back when I had an air conditioner and an SM7B and this 286S. I gave you like a before and after. This is with the noise gate on. This is with it off. And a lot of streamers that don't have a GoXLR generally have this instead, as well as an interface. And for that reason, they like to cut out the background noise, add some gain, some compression. And I play around a little bit with the, the high frequencies, so I can add a little bit of detail to the high end. So it just sounds a little bit more clear sometimes when I speak. There's a lot of times I like to mumble or I'm just sort of in the zone and I don't really pay attention to what I'm saying. I wanna make sure it sounds as close to the real thing as if I'm right next to you. The second piece is the Behringer MDX2600. It's a compressor slash limiter. I originally got this because Man vs. Game had something very similar, and I wanted a more dramatic, I guess, manlier sound to it. Like, I really wanted that extra step of, like, broadcastiness. I wanted, if there was a dial for that, I just wanted to turn that up. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. All right, how about now? How about now? So after doing a bit of research, I, I found a cheaper version of what he had and I bought it used and that was the MDX 2600. In short, the, the compression on this basically, you've probably heard this explanation before, but it takes the loudest and the quietest parts and it just squeezes them together. And the way that I like to explain it is you don't have to adjust the volume knob, whether I'm yelling or whether I'm whispering, you can sort of hear me at a decent volume. But I crank it up a little bit too because I, I tend to yell a lot. So I want that to just be very even keel across the board. <laughs> As an added bonus, this has its own expander gate, which I use to cut out like heavy breathing and like if I have the, if I have the sniffles, I try to cut all that stuff out. Oddly enough, after getting this, a lot of people have said I sound like Shroud or Dr. Lupo. Why? Tell me why! Reveal yourself! Bruh. What? And third and final piece is the Evo 8 mixer slash interface. And that interface just reads on the computer as a USB device. So therefore I have a USB microphone and all the complicated stuff happens ahead of time. So I could yell and there's less background noise and I don't have to worry about the AC blasting in the summer and cars driving by and all this crazy stuff. I can cut all that stuff out and then you get to hear me essentially if I was right next to you. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know if I would buy this whole setup again. If I hadn't gone the route that I had gone with different microphones and different preamps and mixers and all this stuff, I feel like technology has moved in such a way that a lot of this stuff is sort of built in. Like the Shure MV7, for example, is a great dynamic broadcast microphone, which has a lot of the stuff that helps with like background noise rejection, you know, making a specific sound or altering the sound that comes from the microphone. In the app, you can choose among three different sound signatures, dark, natural, and bright, to match the response of the mic to your particular voice or application. You can also access four EQ presets and compressor and limiter processors to control dynamics. Cut. Thanks for watching.